uh, from Larry. Uh, hey, Lars. Larry sent me a file, Fusion 365. I normally don't upload those. I much rather want a screenshot. Uh, uploading the files, bringing them in. It's a little bit of a pain in the neck. Uh, but um, <clears throat> working with Cam and struggling a little bit with feeds and speeds, uh, using um, some Illudimum 6061. Um, so looking for possible some tips and tricks with that. And then how do you engrave um, when you have when you have something that is not flat, when you have a dome on a part, how do you engrave on that um, on that dome? Um, and again, I'm not quite sure exactly We'll go ahead and play with it. So feet and speeds. Let's talk a little bit about feet and speeds. I've talked about it before. I'm going to do this quick. But feet and speeds is really something that depends a lot on, on your machine, on your setup, and on the material. So there is no great formula for this. Um, there's not a one-point solution that's going to work for everybody. My suggestion has always been to create a relationship with who you buy your cutters from. So instead of going out and buying the cheap cutters on Amazon, if you're actually buying it from somebody, um, I buy my cutters from Lakeshore Carbide, other places, you can actually call them and you can ask for some general tips and tricks when it comes to feeds and speeds. Um, so the way to look at it is there's two things to feeds and speeds. There is a surface feed per minute, that is how fast the tool is traveling over um, over the, the material, through the material. It's a little bit like, uh, is the butter hard or is the butter soft? So if it was hard and steel, the butter is frozen. If it is aluminum uh, or wood, then it's sitting out in the sun for a little while. So how fast can your knife travel through that? Again. This has to do with many times with the material. It has to do with the size of the knife. Um, you know, is it a knife, wide knife or a narrow knife? Um, and then um, it comes down to, uh, and the setup, then it comes down to, so that's surface feet per minute. And you can look this up online. You start out with something. Um, so if you have like a half inch cutter um, in, in, in aluminum, you will run a lot slower than if you have, for example, an eighth inch cutter. And you might even run into a problem where the RPMs on your machine is not, um, cannot get up as fast as the book recommends. So this can be a little touchy. Then you have uh, your chip load. So how much chip can you load per tooth on your cutter? So if you have a free flute, a five flute, how big of a chip can you can you bring on there? And I use a rule of starting out with something like a thousand um, of an inch, so 0 0.001 of an inch load on my cutter. That's my starting point because the chip load has more to do with how much power your machine got. Uh, so you can always bring that when you got your surface feet dialed in. So just set it to a thousand. Um, and you have your surface feed dialed in, so you, you're not seeing smoke coming and your machine is not screaming, then you can start playing around with bringing maybe the chip load up on that. Um, about the dome, let's get into Fusion 360. Um, so let's, oh, Fusion 360, not Google. Uh -huh. um, so let's model something up here. Uh, I'm gonna go in here and see for circle. This is a 100 millimeter circle here and let's just extrude that up something doesn't really matter now let's create a dome now this is a little bit like i did earlier in another video uh where we did the uh the the, the lid for detroit sewer system um so i'm gonna go in here create a, a sketch on the side i'm gonna p for and project so i get all the uh, I want to get all the edges here. Um, alpha line, and I'm going to draw a line up here. Now I am going to, um, I'm going to make a point here. I'm going to go ahead here and just create a, uh, a two point, a three point rectangle from here to here. And then 
you can kind of like trying to get it somewhat close here. I'm going to leave it under the fine. Um, I'm going to go in and do this, 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 um, revolve again. So like this and, uh, and just do full around this here. Now we, we kind of get a, a dome. Now you see here how there's, it's hard to see, but there's a little suction mark right here in the center of this. And that is because in that sketch I just created, I did not make you know, something tangent. That's why I create that helping line before. So I just create a horizontal line out like this and place the tangency between these two uh, here. And um, now when I finish it up, we get a much nicer dome. That's the little shadow there, but uh, this should be a lot better as a, um, as a dome. All right, uh, let's do an offset of this plane down here. So we get above the dome a little bit. And I'm just gonna apply some text on this. I'm not quite sure exactly what it is that uh, Larry is going to, um, is uh, Larry is going to, to engrave here, but let's do some text. So let's type in hello, like that. And let's maybe make it a little bit bigger. Uh, we can move it around whatever we want here. Something like this, fine. Okay. I'm gonna hit Q uh, for press pull. And uh, I'm gonna drag that right in there. And now we have this hello engraved on a dome. I hope this is helpful uh, for you, Larry. Now to engrave this, I wanna show, I wanna show two tricks here. Um, the first trick I wanna show is that, um, so just to get to the point, <laughs> that almost takes me a while, um, go into manufacture, do a setup like this. To engrave this, you are looking to use the 2D trace tool. What some people's gonna be like, well, wait a minute, 2D trace, really? Um, yes, because the 2D trace will actually go follow in three axes. Uh, it's a little bit of a, it's a liar that it's in here. It should actually be in the 3D. Um, but since like 2D trace, let's go ahead and select the tool. So let's select the metric tool. I'm gonna select a, uh, I don't know, we can select a chamfer mill here. Select that, actually, if we go back in again, right click and edit, notice that it actually has a tip. I'm gonna make that zero, so it's actually point D. E. Um, and now you can go in and use that tra trace tool and we can select these edges up here. Um, and if you're just looking to just trace around these um, to kind of get an engraving in here, this works great, you can even control if you want to be in center, if you want to be left or right, and, and, and things like this. But this toolpath here, if we go in and simulate this, you will see that that will drive a three axis uh, around here. So this, I think, is what you possibly are looking for. Now, don't forget that in, if we go back to the design, that in, um, in the font, in here, we actually have stick font. So we could have selected that instead of just the, the normal font. If we right click and we edit the scats and we go in here and we select this text here, hello, we could switch that from an Arial to one of these stick fonts up here. I'm not sure which one is, is what, but uh, then you maybe would just project that down to, uh, to the surface, whatever. Uh, now, what I wanted to show in here that I have run into in the past, I wanna show you a little trick and hopefully it's good. And that is that before you engrave, you probably wanna machine this dome, right? But what you're gonna run into uh, when we go in here is that now if I go in and say, all right, I wanna machine this, and uh, you can select, I would probably select a parallel, or maybe you actually selecting a spiral might be a good one for this because it is a dome. So let's go in and select a ball end mill metric, and, uh, and let's go in and select a ball end mill. I'm gonna select a small one two millimeter, uh, let's do a step over. My step over always been default by 0.25 millimeters. Um, now what you will see happening here, I shouldn't have made it that small, it's gonna take a little bit longer to calculate. 
Uh, but what you will see, and it, to the one center. Oh, why is it not machining the whole, the whole thing? Hang on, secondary, secondary problem. I'll move out. Calculate, calculate. Huh. Okay. Okay, I have, uh, oh, that's weird. What did I just do? Somebody right now is yelling at me and saying tool to the center of the boundary. So I use silhouette. What comes right down. Oh, the center point. Is that having to specify the center point? That shouldn't be it, is it? Shouldn't it find that itself? Silhouette tool containment, that's right. Um, link from the outside clockwise in an outer limit. There's an outer limit. <clears throat> there we go. Uh, <laughs> I will not be beaten. Um, so there's an outer limit of this one here, which is kind of interesting. But I was going to show, Jesus, is uh, you see what happens here where it falls into to the lettering um, here. And you're going to tell me that, well, I don't want that because I, I want this to be a dome, nice dome for my engraving to come in. But Fusion is doing the right thing in the sense that Fusion is looking at machining the finished result here uh, and don't want to dive, but you don't want it to dive in here. Here's a neat trick that I have used uh, uh, before, and that is that, let's just get rid of this for a second. Um, if you go back into your design and we roll back to before we did, before we did our engraving, see this? So now we have the nice dome before the engraving was put in. Here's a neat trick. If you go into surface, you can go in here and you can do an offset surface in the surfacing toolpath. Select that. Don't add anything. If you're leaving this as zero, it will copy the surface. Now we have a surface body here. Okay. Now, when we go back into our manufacturer um, and we go in and we say, all right, let's just turn, go into the bodies. Uh, if we turn the body off, we will only see that, that surface there. Now, if we go in and select our spiral and select our tool, then we'll do silhouette. Make sure that we have that at 100. Hit OK. You will see that now it's going to machine this surface without messing with the tracing operation that is actually coming below here. Uh, you only need to do that once, right? Now you can actually turn the body back on. Let me just go back here and bring this back to where that was. Go back into manufacture. I'm going to lock this first spiral because I know that that one is actually good. Uh, and I don't want that by mistake to update that. So you can go ahead and you can protect it. Gets a lock on it. So that toolpath is still there. This one here, we could now go in and, so if you ever hit the regenerate button, we are not messing with the first one. Uh, but that's a way to get a spiral toolpath that will do what you want it to do um, and still have the trace doing what that one was doing. Oof. I hope, um, I hope this was useful. Thumbs up if you like this, thumbs down if you don't, that's okay. Um, there's many ways to, uh, to skin a cat when it comes to, uh, to cam and engraving, but I definitely wanted to show that little uh, 
copy surface thing. I think that's a handy, handy little uh, one.